You'll notice that Father and I are wearing rose during the 40 days of Lent. And one of the reasons why we do this is because of the church giving us during our journey to Easter a reminder that during the discipline of Lent, as we are going about through prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we should also rejoice through it all. Rejoice because we are approaching Easter. We saw that in the last few words of the gospel, where the father says to the older son, but now we must celebrate and rejoice. We must have that joy that comes even during Lent. That's why we wear this particular color. Recently, I attended a deliverance ministry conference. Deliverance ministry is very much related to the joy of today's gospel for the fourth Sunday of Lent. And during Lent, we're called to have a spirit of repentance and reconciliation. We're called to have a sense of sin, and we're called to be and have the freedom of the children of God. We saw the merciful father, the younger prodigal son, and then the older son. I am going to focus on the older son to have us experience deliverance ministry today. There are two main parts to this homily. First is that we are like the older son with grudges and hurts. The second is that we can be delivered from these grudges and hurts. So, let's take a look at the older son in today's gospel. Notice the older son's reaction to his father. The older son became angry. He bitterly didn't want to go into his father's house anymore. He said to his father, All these years I've served you, and not once did you give me a goat to celebrate with my friends, but, but my, older son, my older brother comes home, and, and he squanders his life. He ruins our family name. He hurts us. And yet you throw him a homecoming party. The older son needed to be unbound, freed from the shackles of a spirit of unforgiveness. He needed a freedom, a joy that is befitting of a son or daughter, a child of God. He was in a bondage or a spirit of bitterness that was eating at his heart. And he needed deliverance. And deliverance ministry is now the second point. And this involves a simple prayer of authority using Jesus' name to drive out spirits troubling God's children. One need not be an ordained priest to use Jesus' name to free people in bondage. To use the words of today's responsorial psalm, taste and see the goodness of the Lord, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Deliverance ministry is different from the sacrament of reconciliation and it's different from the solemn rite of exorcism. Both confession and exorcism require a priest, but deliverance ministry does not. These are three completely different, although related, ministries. So whereas in the sacrament of reconciliation, where we take accountability and confess our sins to the priest of how we hurt God and each other, deliverance ministry, by contrast, is where we need to be freed from a spirit of hurt caused to us by another person or even to ourselves. The authority to close off any open doors of hurt comes from the name of Jesus and the the baptism and confirmation that you have. When I first heard of the word deliverance ministry, I thought it was a Protestant televangelist thing. But in the history of the Catholic Church, the Church has always delivered her children from the evil influences of the fallen spirits. The secular, non-religious world will call this, you know, bad karma, quote-unquote, or negative energy. But we in the Christian creed know that we believe in all things visible and invisible in the spiritual world of the good and bad angels. So, here are some of the steps 
in deliverance ministry. I will summarize briefly what normally can take about 20 minutes with each person, if done well. First, believe and repent in the name of Jesus. Then you want to make an act of forgiveness and renunciation using Jesus' name. And you want to say it. So, for example, you say, in the name of Jesus, I forgive, and you say the person's name, for whatever that person did. And here you want to be specific as you can. I've seen times where it's hard for the person to say the person's name who hurt them. And so at that point, you can kind of whisper the person's name gently under your breath. So for example, in the name of Jesus, I forgive Dennis for leaving me with the kids in our marriage. Or in the name of Jesus, I ask the ma- I forgive the masked man who broke into my car. Okay. In the case of the older pro- prodigal, in the case of the older son, he would say, "In the name of Jesus, I forgive my younger prodigal brother for living a life of dissipation, for ruining our finances and our property." After forgiving, then you want you want to after forgiving you want to renounce the spirit of whatever it was. So in the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of unforgiveness. And then either you or the person praying over you takes authority in the name of Jesus and says something like, In the name of Jesus, I I take authority over the spirits, and I in the name of Jesus I command them to go to the foot of the cross. Deliverance ministry is not exorcism. We're not to converse with the evil spirits. Only an exorcist should do that. And finally, you want to say thank you. Thank you to Jesus for freeing you. Okay, so those are the two main parts of the homily. We are sometimes like the older son with hurts. And then we can be forgiven of those hurts. So are are you ready to forgive somebody right now? Now, Normally, I ask you to think of one or two people. You might think of like 20 people, but let's just focus on one or two. Uh, you may remain seated, and I invite you to be freed of this. So repeat after me. I believe in you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I forgive. Whisper that person's name. Four. In the name of Jesus, I forgive for. In the name of Jesus, I forgive myself for. Repeat after me. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of unforgiveness. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of resentment and bitterness. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of revenge and anger. And in the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of whatever you'd like to add. Now you can say this part, or in this case, I will go ahead and say it. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over and break the power of every spirit that the people in this church have renounced, and I command them to go right now to the foot of the cross. Now repeat after me. Thank you, Jesus, for this freedom. Thank you for this joy. And thank you for this gift to forgive this Lent. And there you go. We learned another way to forgive hurts. I close with the words from the Word of God where we are a new creation through this forgiveness. It's from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians in the second reading. Whoever is in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come.
Let the church rise. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty.